I love democracy. I love the Republic. With the new version of Stellaris 3.6 that's going to be coming imminently and the open beta, we're going to be getting our hands on a new rework to some of the existing traditions plus an entirely new tradition that we've never had before in the game. I'm not talking about the new Ascension traditions, I mean a brand new tradition that we otherwise would not have got. So let's dive in and find out more. Let's start with the changes, the rebalance coming to the traditions we already know and possibly love. First off, we have Enhanced Recycling. This has the effect of giving building and district strategic resource cost and upkeep cost a 10% reduction. This is a direct swap for dietary enrichment from the adaptability tradition, and it replaces the old effect, which used to give us plus 10% food output, which really wasn't that great, or if you were a lithoid, gave you a 15% refund on building deconstruction, which is a little bit weird, with a relatively nice and pleasant reduction to our upkeep for districts and buildings. The special resource reduction is probably the best part of this, although overall this isn't a massively overpowered new tradition or anything like that, it's just a nice minor change. Prosperity has had quite a bit of a shakeup. For a lot of people, this is pretty much regarded as the most powerful tradition pick to take right at the start of the game if you're trying to bootstrap your economy as high as possible. They've changed the interstellar franchising tradition. It will no longer give you an extra clerk job, which to be quite honest, made it a completely useless pick for most people as a lot of us do disable that extra clerk job. Instead, it gives us minus 5% job upkeep as does its swap for Gestalt's. Getting a 5% reduction to job upkeep, so that can be your consumer goods upkeep if you're a researcher, that could be your mineral upkeep if you're a metallurgist, basically every job in your empire, aside from the basic resource producing jobs, is going to benefit from this tradition now, whereas before you simply had no benefit from interstellar franchising. They have also hit prosperity with the nerf stick a little bit. The finisher for Prosperity used to give you plus 5% resource output from jobs and plus 5 stability. Now it does not give you the plus 5 stability, which is definitely a reduction, but I don't think it's actually as big a reduction as we could have possibly had. 5 extra stability only equate to about a 3% or exactly a 3% increase to resources from jobs, so if anything they've nerfed the less powerful of the two finisher effects here from prosperity. It is a bit of a reduction going from an 8% increase to a 5% increase, but overall I still think this leaves Prosperity as pretty much the strongest initial tradition pick in the game. Now that plus one clerk jobs, it didn't go away completely, it's been bundled into the mercantile tradition and added into the trickle up economics. It now gives the extra clerks from interstellar franchising as well as the plus one trade value from clerks. Now overall I think getting that change added in there is a slight benefit to Mercantile, if even it can be called a benefit at all. Generally speaking, as I've said before, you don't tend to play with clerks that much. They're not a very efficient job for your pops to be working. So yes, it is a minor change to have it here in Mercantile. It's nice definitely from a thematic point of view to have extra clerks from the Mercantile tradition, but yeah, it's nothing massive to write home about. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by going to montuplays.com and purchasing something from Montu Plays merchandise. So far, we've only got a few t-shirts and a phone case, but keep your optic nerves peeled as we expand the range. There's also a link to that down in the description below. Versatility, which is the robot specific tradition, the finisher no longer gives a plus 50% refund for destroyed buildings or districts, and that is instead replaced with plus two amenities from maintenance drones. Now I don't have a screenshot of this, but it was mentioned. This is a very powerful increase, however it does not still put versatility on a power level equal to something like synchronicity, which gives plus two extra amenities from the unity producing jobs for hive minds. So it's still not as strong as its hive mind equivalent, though it is an improvement I do have to say. Getting extra amenities from maintenance drones will reduce the number of maintenance drones you have to have per planet, thus increasing overall pop efficiency, which is a good thing for your empire economically. And the last change to look at is some bonuses to Harmony. Now, the opener reduces all pop upkeep, 
not just uh, food upkeep or mineral upkeep as a lithoid, by 10%. This means it won't just be your food, but also your consumer goods usage as a pop that gets reduced by 10%. We can definitely combine this with other reductions for pop upkeep to make it much, much easier to get to 100% pop upkeep reduction and thus meaning our pops cost absolutely nothing to have in our empire, though of course there will be still costs to pay for the jobs they work. And then when it comes to the finisher effect, we are no longer going to be getting the minus 10% empire size from pops that we are so used to from Harmony. Instead, we will unlock the Holy Covenant Federation type and we will get plus 25% planetary ascension effects. Now, given that at the moment planetary ascension is not something we tend to use, this doesn't seem so great. But when we combined it with one of the new civics that we've seen, which gives us another plus 25% planetary ascension effects, and some other places that further boost planetary ascension effects as well, we could see this being rather useful for a spiritualist empire, but the jury is still out on that. Let's wait until we get our hands on the open data very, very soon before we make a judgment there. The minus 10% empire size from Pops is not completely gone though. It's been bundled into Kinship, which has the rather rubbish ability, or I should say not very powerful ability, it can be quite pleasant from a micromanagement perspective, of reducing the demotion time for Pops by 75%. Now it also gives minus 10% empire size from Pops, which is a rather nice addition to have in that location. And now what you've probably all been waiting for, the brand new tradition we're going to be getting in the game. So this tradition is both very, very powerful, I might even say overpowered for certain play styles and in certain specific types of games, some people are going to find this very, very powerful indeed, but for others, it's going to be a completely useless tradition, which you wouldn't even look twice at. Why is that? Well, the galactic stage is set, and we intend to have the first role. This, the politics tradition, is entirely focused on the galactic community, galactic law, and everything entailed within that. So the adoption effects for this new tradition are plus one envoy. That in essence means you can get an extra 10% diplomatic weight in the community. And envoys assigned to the galactic community now produce 0.1 influence. This means you're going to be getting extra influence generation out of assigning your envoys to the galactic community for use in proposing more legislation and also using favors from other empires. This would be a great tradition to take after you've already taken some something like diplomacy and set up your own federation to get some of the perks from that tradition tree and also from the uh, federation stuff. There are lots of federation uh, bonuses where you get extra envoys or extra diplomatic weight. So these two would work really well in concert. As far as I know, you do have to have the federation's DLC in order to get this tradition but that is because you need access to the Federation's DLC in order to get the full galactic community experience anyway. And without that, this would probably be pretty worthless. The finisher is that adopting all politics traditions will grant you plus 10% diplomatic weight and will unlock four special resolutions in the galactic community. I will look at what those new resolutions are, but first let's look at what each of the individual parts of this tradition tree will give us. And if you're enjoying this video, please vote with that like button. This first one is really quite interesting, especially in a multiplayer game, I believe. This could make it very, very hard for one player to get all of the power and thus propose themselves possibly the custodian later on. Quid pro quo. Carefully worded rhetoric will make it clear that our support comes at a cost. Those we help owe us and one day we will collect. Whenever a resolution that you supported passes, gain one favor on the empire that proposed it. This basically means you could allow another player to pass lots and lots of resolutions while constantly supporting them, and then later on use all of their favors to either prevent them from passing a resolution or to help you pass a resolution like becoming the custodian that would very much help you out. Gravitas. 
Politics is the art of illusions. By showing others what they want to see, we'll grow our influence in the community. Minus 25% influence cost to veto or propose resolutions. This should really help you with actually being able to propose lots and lots of resolutions as they can get rather expensive, especially in the early to mid game. Each envoy assigned to the galactic community provides an additional 2.5% diplomatic weight. That should be quite a lot, especially if we put say four or five envoys into the galactic community. This is basically a 25% increase on how much an envoy counts for our empire when we assign it to galactic community weight in terms of the extra support it provides. Whenever a resolution you proposed passes, gain 18 months worth of unity. Now, I assume this one will only be gaining us unity based on our net output, not our gross unity output. If it's our gross unity output, that's insane, but I assume it's our unity output after our unity costs are factored in. This would mean though, when your resolutions are about to pass, you probably want to turn off all of your edicts just for that one month to get extra unity from this tradition. National agenda. Our victories on the Senate floor should be celebrated. They bring us ever closer to a better future. Future. Whilst not overwhelmingly powerful, this could make it really, really useful if you're pushing and passing lots and lots of agendas to get your hands on lots of extra unity to keep getting more traditions in this tree. If you can pass enough agendas, it could end up meaning, if you take this possibly for your second or third and your unity production is high enough, you in essence get one or two free tradition picks from this tradition pick. Persistent Petitioners. Our delegations in the galactic community are extremely persistent, and we will not take no for an answer. It might take time, but we will obtain what we deserve. After a resolution is passed by another empire, gain 25% extra diplomatic weight until one of your own resolutions passes. Now, I assume this only stacks once. If it stacks repeatedly every time another resolution is passed, this becomes a diplomatic bomb. If you basically sit there and allow other resolutions to pass, you can end up with say 150, maybe even 200% additional diplomatic weight, and then use that to propose becoming the custodian earlier than we've ever managed to do it in the game. This could be really powerful. I do think it might only stack just the one time, in which case it's nice, but not amazing. The final part of this tradition tree is rather interesting. In order to actually select this tradition, you must become part of the Galactic Council or higher. Extraordinary powers. Extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. We have already been trusted with power, it is only natural to let us wield it. Effects, veto cooldown minus 25%, emergency measures cooldown minus 25%. This could mean becoming the galactic custodian or indeed staying as the galactic custodian is easier than ever. I think overall this tradition would be very, very interesting and very, very powerful in a multiplayer game where some of the focus is on diplomacy. I'm thinking like the Stellaris France GPO events that they have. This tradition could be really, really useful and worthwhile in an event like that. But what do you think about this rework to traditions and the new tradition we'll be getting with Stellaris 3.6? Let me know down in the comments below. But don't forget, we also get four new resolutions that we can pass in the galactic community when we complete the politics tradition. The first of these is Champions of the Community. You will get a, an effective gain to your naval capacity if you pass this resolution and you are either on the council, the custodian or the emperor. Galactic council members gain 10% naval capacity, the custodian gains 20% and the emperor gains 25%. All other members of the community actually lose 5% naval capacity if this is pushed. This could be very useful if you are trying to either protect the galaxy from an external crisis or possibly just protect the galaxy from itself. Constitutional immunity. This basically means that you can never be in breach of galactic law. It's also something of a, a round robin or pass the hat uh, kind of thing only one empire in the galaxy can have constitutional immunity if a new empire actually gets it the previous empire loses their immunity 
Now you see, sometimes you need to get dirty in the name of the greater good. We honor the moral sacrifices made by those who allow us to live comfortable lives sheltered from moral dilemmas. To quote the water walker, sometimes you have to do what's wrong in order to do what's right. And the last of the new resolutions is the Galactic Threats Committee. Damage to endgame crisis factions plus 20%, researchers upkeep also plus 20%, and then we've got some evil red text. Dangerous experiments might have dangerous results. Who knows what threats lurk just out of sensor range, creating a committee dedicated to the study of galactic level threats will prepare us for anything. I have no idea, obviously, I mean, none of us do, except the devs, what kind of, uh, what kind of problem this red text could cause, but I, for, for one, definitely want to find out because it's always fun uh, unlocking the secrets of red text boxes. Uh, yeah, this could be really great, really interesting. Overall, extra damage to endgame crisis factions is nice to have, especially with a new possible 55 times crisis if you go 25 times and then fight all crisis. But overall, yeah, interesting. The main power for this one, I think, is champions of the community. That is something I've wanted to see for a long time. Basically taking naval cap from other members and putting it with yourself as the president of the galactic community. And it's definitely nice to have a whole bunch of new resolutions that we can play with. I am a big fan of the galactic community and of interstellar politics, so I am 100% behind this new politics tradition. And the good thing about the new traditions is basically, if you don't like this new tradition, you never actually have to take it. They've added in a whole bunch of new traditions now for each of the different ascension paths. They now finish with a tradition, so the pressure on us to choose traditions we want is greater than ever. Development aids is a rather interesting one. The most privileged amongst us have a moral duty to help the others. They will shoulder our burdens to guide us towards a more harmonious community. Council members gain 20% extra diplomatic weight, but then they lose a whopping 15% of their income in energy, minerals, and food. Other members of the community lose 20% diplomatic weight, but gain 5% more income in energy, minerals, and food. Overall, I think it could be useful to get the extra Diplo weight, but I really don't think a 20% Diplo weight increase, which is equivalent to two envoys, is going to be worth 15% of your energy, minerals, and food. I like the idea here, but I just don't think this is actually effective enough. That is, unless, of course, you're not on the Galactic Community, in which case you should definitely pass this just to watch the Galactic Community members lose 15% of their energy and minerals. I mean, that, that would be a hilarious use of this, going, oh, no, sorry, you're on the Community, but now you have to pay us some money. It's tax time, buddies. If you've enjoyed this video on the changes coming to Stellaris with 3.6 Orion, and you'd like to know more about the combat rebalance coming with Stellaris Orion and the new frigate ship class, click the video on screen now.